Do you want the precision of linear rails but without the price tag? This exoslide system might just be for you. You know me, I love modifying 3D printers and I'm always looking for new and interesting things to feature on the channel. One thing people always request is to do an upgrade that fits linear rails. And while I probably will do that to one of my printers at some stage, in the meantime, I've got something a little bit novel for you. This exoslide system is modular and one of the main benefits is that you can add it to your existing 2020 extrusions and compared to a lot of linear rails, that makes it more affordable. Let's start this video by looking at the product and addressing the problem that it's trying to fix. Many modern 3D printers run on V-slot extrusions. The linear carriages that give our printers the motion are mounted on these special wheels that ride in the slots. And here it is in action on the end of five. And when we look at the x-axis, we come across, in my opinion, the main problem. And that's the amount of play, even when they're tensioned and tightened correctly against the 2020 extrusion. We can alleviate this, like on this side winder X1, by having a much wider extrusion. And that moves the flex to the rest of the frame. But most printers don't have this especially those that have a skinny single extrusion in the middle for the y-axis, it can cause the whole bed to be able to tilt from left to right. For an X carriage with a hot end, the more you have cantilevered, the more prone it's going to be to movement. Now it's only fair to state that during printing, the type of force I'm putting into the system with my hand just won't be apparent and you can get some amazing print results even on really cheap printers like the Ender 3. You can see on this test print that the extrusion is very even and there's minimum artifacts such as ghosting. Sometimes, however, you might need more precision for certain situations. And that's where linear rails come in. They have tight tolerances and offer minimal wobble. To modify our printers with a known brand like Hywin, it's gonna cost a pretty penny. For the Ender 5, we would need three sets of linear rails at $35 each, as well as bearing blocks at $46 each. There are much cheaper brands around, but the problem remains that you still need other parts to be able to convert to the new system. There are some 3D printers like this Cetus Mark III that come with linear rails, but their carriages aren't always that well designed. We can see here that this one flexes, it's just a poor carriage design, the actual bearing isn't moving. But fortunately there's now a happy middle ground in the form of exoslides. They are modular and made up of these single pieces and you can use up to four to completely surround your existing 2020 extrusion. Each one has a series of four M4 holes for bolting various parts to, and it's also worth noting that there's a tensioning system if you need a really tight fit. Tightening the internal bolts will remove any slop if you need a really precise application. There's also these 90 degree conversion brackets. I see this as a great product to make custom CNC equipment by using any 2020 extrusion and then building high precision carriages using this system. And Exoslide actually have their own 3D printer designed in this way. It uses off the shelf 2020 extrusion and then Exoslide carriages to provide linear motion. What we're looking at today, however, is a kit specifically made for the Ender 5. At $110, it's not overly cheap or expensive and it's good to know that it includes all of the parts you need to convert your Ender 5, including high quality laser cut aluminium brackets. All right, so that's the theory. And what I fitted for this video is a kit specifically made for the Ender 5. It still uses the same modular components that you can buy individually, but then it has some pre-made components to help it fit this printer. For this guide, I'm going to be following the step-by-step -step official instructions. So without any further delay, let's get started. The exo slides are a touch longer than the stock carriages, so we don't lose any travel, we need to change the brackets in the corner. We're going to start by disassembling them by removing the two bolts. Here you can see the old one being removed and the new smaller one going in in its place. We use small bolts and T-slot nuts and it's simply a matter of pushing it into the corner and then tightening both of those bolts. And we are of course doing this for both the front corners. Our next steps involve tearing down the factory assembly. And we're going to start by removing belt tension by loosening the idlers on the front corners of the printer. Once all three bolts for these have been undone, you should find there's just enough slack to maneuver out the two belt ends per side for the Y axis. With the belts hanging loose on each side, you should have completely free motion of the Y axis. 
Next, we're going to loosen the X-belt tension and we'll achieve that in the same way by loosening the two bolts that hold the tensioning idler. Once again, with a little bit of wiggling, you should be able to remove both ends of the X-belt. We'll now turn our attention to the underside of the wire carriages and there's two bolts per side that when completely removed will allow you to remove the horizontal 2020 extrusion and separate it completely from the Y carriages. With the X axis railing now loose on both sides, we can lift up one corner and then roll off the hot end carriage. After this, we can also remove the bolts that hold all of the hot end components to that carriage. We'll continue our disassembly by removing the X axis stepper motor on the right hand side of the machine. Undo the four bolts on top and then unplug it and set it aside. We still need to remove the old carriages altogether and we can achieve this by undoing a pair of the rollers on one side. Once both rollers are out, the old carriage will simply lift off and we are doing this for both sides. There's also some other little details to remove, such as the end stop for the X axis. This completes our tear down of the parts that are going to be replaced, but please hold on to all of the hardware. Some of these nuts and bolts will be recycled during the reassembly. A good example of this is the X axis idler. We need to remove the bearings and the M8 bolt that holds it all together. We're also going to remove the short bolts and T-slot nuts. The new X-belt idler looks pretty similar, but we're going to assemble the pulley in exactly the same way. It's an M8 bolt and then a spacer nut, the two bearings and then a lock nut to hold it all together. Make sure you do this up really tight. We will be inserting bolts and T-slot nuts but we're not recycling the old ones in this case, we're gonna use new ones that came with the kit. Next up is the left hand Y carriage, and we're gonna start once again with a belt idler. Only difference this time is we have a washer at the base. Apart from that, everything is the same, and you can tighten it up as tight as you want because the bearings will still be able to rotate freely. On the opposite corner, we have a T-slot nut. That one's from the new kit, but the long M5 bolt that we use on the remaining hole is recycled from the printer. Our Y carriage bracket for the right hand side is very similar in construction. We're going to build another belt idler exactly the same as before, a washer followed by a nut, two bearings and then a lock nut on top, done up as tight as you can manage. The inner hole is going to get a new bolt and T-slot nut and then we're going to recycle another M5 bolt through the remaining hole. The X-axis stepper motor goes into the remaining three holes on a 45 degree angle as you can see here. The kit contains three M3 bolts for holding the stepper motor to the brackets. That's the two wire carriages done, so now let's turn our attention to the X carriage. As well as the plate, we need to find the two small spaces from the kit. They're to mimic the little spaces that stand the hot end off from the plate. There's more M3 bolts that come for this, we need to thread them through the spaces and at this stage just sew them up finger tight, because we will need to disassemble to put the hot end down later. That means at this stage these bolts are only temporary. We can now take four XL slide pieces and rotate them as necessary to build up an assembly that completely surrounds a 2020 extrusion piece. Locate from the kit the set of eight long bolts that have blue Loctite on the ends. You'll notice some threaded inserts with vacant holes on the opposite sides. Insert the long bolts through these and tighten them with your hex key. There's two per side, so after you finish each one, rotate 90 degrees, find the empty holes and repeat the tightening process. The four exo slide pieces should be locked together and you want to orient them as seen here with the two skinny bits facing up and down. We'll then take the hot end plate that we were just working on and align it with the two outer M4 bolts on the exo slide. There's a set of two bolts made for this purpose and we can torque these up as much as we want because this whole sub assembly is not coming apart again. Take a minute to enjoy the high quality injection mouldings. We'll now take the larger of the 3D printed parts as well as the end stop and insert a long bolt through the middle and then a T-slot nut underneath. After this we'll retrieve the micro switch and use M3 bolts to mount it in place. Take your time with these when you're putting them together as the bolts are going to cut their own threads into the printed parts as you insert them for the first time. This is the final of our sub assemblies that we need to prep and that should bring you to a total of 5 ready to install on the printer. A horizontal extrusion is completely loose of the printer. We want to make sure the threaded holes are facing up and down and then we'll take our carriage and slide it over the top. Now's a great time to see how everything is feeling and to me the tolerances feel fantastic. 
we now want to locate the two 20 millimeter brackets we're going to face a smooth of the two sides towards the inside and then carefully pry and slide them onto the extrusion the same thing will happen on the right hand side smooth side in to make it symmetrical don't worry about the final positioning of these yet it's time to add our next sub assembly we'll look to the underside of the extrusion and insert the outer larger m5 bolt through the pre-threaded hole the smaller nut next to it has the t-slot and it can be tied in two the x-axis idler is meant to sit on top but i found i had a very small problem the mounting bolt from underneath was sat up a little bit too high and interfered my solution was just to pack a couple of washers on the underside of the bolt which for me got it sitting at the perfect height and enabled me to put the tensioner in place we'll turn our attention to the other end of the extrusion and now fit the end stop the micro switch nestles nicely into the bracket and we only need to do up this bolt loosely for now the right hand assembly attaches much like the left we take the longest bolt and we line it up with the outer screw hole on the underside of the extrusion it can be torqued tightly as can the smaller t-slot bolt next to it the kit comes with a new x-axis belt and we're now going to retrieve that and install it on the carriage the ribbing faces inwards and it should be pretty easy for this first one to slot the end of the belt in place on the rear of the assembly it's really important to make sure the belt travels underneath all of the components and rides inside the channel of the extrusion loop it around the stepper motor pulley and then once again push it into the slot to retain it on the center carriage that's most of our assembly finished which means we're now ready to fit it to the printer frame i figured now was a good time to reassemble the hot end when you bolt it on just make sure you keep the spaces behind as we already had set up everything goes back together in the same way the only change i had to make was grinding a hole in the back of my bl touch bracket to clear the higher belt we're definitely in the home stretch now and we need to prepare the final two carriages to bolt onto the printer frame the right hand carriage uses two exo slides rotate them as necessary slot them together and then retrieve the final small gray printed part from the kit it's held in place with the bolt and pokes out just far enough to activate the Y end stop. There's four bolts to do in total, so after you've done the first side, rotate 90 degrees and then do the other side as well. For the left hand side of the printer, there's only one exo slide needed. All you need to do is make sure the two empty holes are facing the front. Installation of this side is the easiest thing in the whole kit. Simply apply some pressure and it'll snap into place. My right hand side gave me some issues because I have these acrylic enclosure pieces. I needed to cut a slot and I also needed to loosen two of the screws on the assembly until I could wiggle it into place. Don't forget after that to reinsert the screws and to tighten everything back up to keep it true. This is a good chance to go around to all the parts you've just fitted, torque everything up to make sure it doesn't come loose later on. We can now see the effect of the printed piece and verify that it lines up with the micro switch. We can now take our center assembly and rest it on the two carriages on the outside of the printer. Careful alignment is needed on each side. We're always going to leave the first two empty and then insert bowls in holes number three and four, which will pull the bracket up against the exo slide piece. Repeat the same thing on the right hand side. Squeeze the bracket until it's just about touching. Leave the first two empty and then insert number three and four to tighten everything up. It should roll back and forth with ease. With everything aligned we can now tension the nut and bolt on each bracket and then after that turn our attention to the x tensioner pull it tight and lock down the t-nuts in place to maintain belt tension next are the y belts on either side we're going to thread them through from underneath at the front and rear of each carriage then we'll pull the tensioner at the front corners of the printer and tighten everything up remember that for these previous few steps we've been doing it on the left and right hand side of the printer at the same time if you're doing things in the same order as me you should find that that was the final step in the assembly and you can test by hand that everything is moving around as it should everything is fitted and the total installation time for me was probably a touch over two hours but remember i'm going to be a little bit slower because i have to stop and film the million dollar question is does it stop the flex and the answer to that i would say somewhat I feel like when I try and flex a hot end carriage that things are still moving but instead of the carriage flexing on the extrusion it seems the whole extrusion is twisting too. Now unfortunately I can't provide my usual back-to-back -back testing. This thing is in pieces as I head towards my upgrade of making it fully enclosed with a heated build chamber. 
but I still love to know your thoughts and comments on how you think this will compare to the standard system as well as proper linear rails. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.